Welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna be talking about bit banging. This is an LED controller chip, and this LED controller has 12 LED outputs. When you send data to it, if you look at the data sheet, you will see that the first, you're always sending 16 bits, or you're sending two bytes. You're always sending two bytes, 16 bits, so whatever we talked about, I'm using a unsigned short in the code, and that's uh, 16 bits. And every time you shift out 16 bits, and the, ch the chip needs, the first one is the command, the first 16 bits, and then you would send the 12 individual LEDs, and that will be the level of uh, brightness from zero to being lit to one, 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 one all the way, or FFFF if you're looking at, looking at it in hex, to make it as bright as possible. Now, the command that we are sending here is, if you look at the encode, the command is zero. If you look at the data sheet, if the command is zero, we are using eight bit level for the LED. So the, actually we are sending 16 bits, but the upper byte is completely ignored. The only the lowest, a uh, portion of that 16-bit, they have one byte, so from 0 to 255, uh, this is the range you would have for an LED. The other numbers, you can, the other byte, you can set it to whatever, it won't make any difference. So you're sending an, a value, and then in the loop at the bottom of the code, you would see how there's a loop. In the loop, we're sending the bit to the individual LEDs to like on, 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 and then it goes back, and then if it was on, to turn it off. So you have it like sweeping through, and that's what we have right here. So I turn them on, 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 back, off, 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 off. Now, when you send the, sh the, the, uh, the chip, when you send it 12, individual 16 bits for the individual 12 LEDs, and then the command, uh, which is also 16 bit, you have to latch that data in. So while you're sending data in, nothing is affected on the LEDs externally. This value is going inside the chip, and then you latch it out. That's what a latch is. Uh, you would see this in a, like a shift register, for example. Whatever you're sending goes internally inside uh, the, uh, the chip. And then when all data is in, you latch. Usually there is a pin that you latch, uh, the, the, the whatever you sent out on the physical pins. In this case, there's no additional pins. They're trying to save on how many pins you need. And to latch, actually, you latch through software. And they did it very nicely. This is also something new I haven't seen before. You actually, to latch the data, there's a trick. Usually we, we, we toggle the clock while sending data, but to latch, they reverse roll. You don't move the clock anymore and you clock the data more than two times. You, they recommend four times in the data sheet. So you do four clocks. And in the, in the code, you would see where, where it says latch in the code. I would have a loop that's looping eight times, that's eight times one high and one low, so that's four clocks, because one high, one low, that's one full clock. So you would see eight in the loop, but that's, if you look at the scope, that's gonna end up being one, two, three, four, so that's gonna end up being four pulses. So you would send the data, I'll show you here really quick. The data, you, this is clock, let's say, uh, yeah, let's say this is clock right here, and this is data. So at the beginning, you would be sending the clock and then whatever data you need to send. But then at the end, to latch, this is over here, the latch area, you would leave the clock constant and then you would do four pulses. So when the chip sees four pulses on data while the latch is not changing, it will latch this data out. And this is how we control the LED. Now this gets a bit nicer because those are made to be chainable. That's, these are LED controllers. So you can have a whole LED panel connected to this, just the two pins. And when you're sending data, it goes to the first chip, and then you send more data, it goes to the second, to the third, to the fourth, and nothing shows on the screen yet until you latch. That's the beauty of having a latch. So you're, you're not seeing flicker or you're not seeing the display updating. You're sending the entire display, that could be 100 of them. So uh, that's 100 times 12. So you would have 100 chips times 12 LEDs and you're sending all this data. And then when you're done uh, sending all this data in, you would send one latch and they all come in with that new 
data at, at once. And then you would see uh, the, the change happening on all 100 LEDs, at, uh, 100 chips with 12 each at the same time. Uh, and there's an example right here. So this also another groove module from Seed. And this one is called a circular LED. And you can see on the back, it has two of these chips. So there's one right here and one right here. And those two chips are exactly the same chip we have on the, the paragraph. And these are chains. So when you send data to the first one, it goes, when you send more data, it goes to the second one. Now you can control these 24 LEDs using the same code. Now, here's the challenge. I could not get this to work, and I need your help. Let me see if you can solve it, and if you solve it, you get a $100 gift certificate from me for anything you want to buy from GHI Electronics. So the code is there. Take a look and tell me what am I doing wrong. This drove me nuts for about two days. I lost half my hair trying to figure out why I can't get it to work, and I really don't know why. And the code that you have, uh, it's, a, it's the same code that I have running on here is the code running on, the same code will run on the, uh, the circular LED. The only difference between the two in case you end up like buying both and you want to try it out. Uh, the, when they see designed them, they didn't realize that they, they swapped the data and clock line. Not that it matters, they are in software controlled, but when you move from one to another, the pin you use for data and the pin you use for clock, you just have to swap them in code. So the clock pin becomes a data pin and data pin becomes a clock pin. So if I, if I disconnect it and I connect this LED, it's not gonna work right now. I have to recompile my code to swap the, the pins. Now, if I connect this one and uh, let, me, let me change the code and I'll, I'll show you how this works on the circular LED. So here is the, the new code, I refreshed the uh, the fez with the new code, and now the code, uh, I swapped the data and clock line, and now I'm able to control the, uh, the chip. And as you can see, only half the LEDs are coming on. This is the very first chip in the chain. That's this one. The second chip is not receiving the data. What I, re what I notice here, what's happening is that when I send the data, the first chunk of data I send goes to the first chip. And then when I send the second chunk of data, it doesn't go to the following chip. It still goes to the same chip. Maybe the data is being clocked in too slow for the chip to understand this data goes to the next one. I didn't see anything about that in the data sheet. So I can never get data to go in to the, uh, to the second chip. I thought the second chip might be bad or the first chip is bad, but if you, um, if I swap the pins, which is wrong, but if I swap the pins, I would see all LEDs coming on. So the second chip is receiving data, um, the wrong data, but it's coming on. So I know it's not, the, the module is not, does not have a problem. Something is wrong, I need your help. Can you find the issue by next week? We'll talk to you later.